Hello, dear ones. My name is Drex16, and thank you for clicking on this video. Today's video is going to be about the Pope, and unless you've been living under a rock for the last few weeks, you've no doubt heard that the Pope blesses people who are in a same-sex union. Or not a union, but like a, like a relationship. They've said that, you know, while they oppose same-sex marriage, they can still bless people who are in a same-sex relationship. Now, that just right off the bat sends so many warning signs. It's like my, you know, spiritual panel. It's going, boop, 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 check engine now, boop, 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 check engine now, check engine now. So, I mean... Are we going to, is he going to now bless people who are in an adulterous relationship? Is he going to bless people who are in polygamist relationships? Or polygamy, whatever it's called. It's when a guy has multiple wives or when a woman has multiple husbands. That's what polygamy is. So, yeah, he said that, that Catholic priests have the his permission to blame not blame to bless same sex relationships <sighs> obviously he has no regard for anything in the bible because the bible is well i mean gay people are always going on and on about how jesus is affirming and jesus is compassionate but in matthew 19 Jesus identifies that the only valid sexual outlet is that which is between a husband and a wife. And he said in Matthew 19, have you never read in the beginning God who made them male and female? So Jesus is affirming the story of creation that's found in the book of Genesis, that the proper sexual partner for a man is a woman. And the proper sexual partner for a woman is a man. Now, granted, you have to be married, of course, but the opposite sex coupling is one that is the only outlet that God approves of. That's it. So, and of course, Catholics have been, you know, taken aback by Pope Francis's state stance on this issue. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, Catholics at this point are masters of tap dancing around what the Pope says. They, they're they totally freestyling right now. They're able to just make it up as they go. So they try and find some way, if there's any possible way, we got to try to find a way to make it seem as though what he's saying has been true all along. Because they'll say, well, yeah, but... He doesn't approve of same-sex marriage, though. And I would say, if you don't think the Catholic Church is going to cave into that next, then you're not very bright. Because that's where the Catholic Church is going. Heck, I, it, this wouldn't surprise me at all if the next pope is a homosexual. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. That's where they're going with this. They caved into evolution they caved into Jesus being the only way to heaven because they believe that Muslims are also uh, in God's plan of salvation, despite the fact that Muslims deny that Jesus is the Son of God. And um, what was I talking about? I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. But the point is, you have millions of different interpretations of what Pope Francis says. Millions of them. And so, it's just, it's a joke, really, when you get down to it. They'll claim that the Pope is without error, but what he says has to be interpreted all the time. You can't take what the Pope says at face value, because if you do take it at face value, he's denying that marriage is the only valid outlet for sexual activity. Now, I know he's not necessarily encouraging people to enter into same-sex relationships, but he is blessing couples who are in same-sex relationships. So people who say that 
oh yeah, they're just they're just blessing them as individuals. They're just calling them to repentance. Then why did that document that recently came out in in which Pope Francis said that they're to bless same sex couples? I mean, everything the Pope says has to be interpreted. So what does the Pope clarify then? He clarifies absolutely nothing because everything he says has to be interpreted by Catholics. And it's so ironic too, because Catholics are always going on and on and on about how Protestantism is just basically you and the Bible and that there are 33,000 Protestant denominations. But really there's a lot of Catholic division you find dozens and dozens. I go to a Catholic uh, forum called St. Isidore's Lounge, and in the thread about this very topic, you had dozens, possibly even hundreds, of different interpretations as to what the Pope meant when he said that they're to bless same-sex couples. So while, there, while the abundance of this division is going on, don't talk to me about unity in the Catholic Church. Don't tell me that, you know, that it's just you and the Bible. Because if even if that were true, if Protestantism was just you and the Bible, well, you Catholics are doing the same thing because now you get to interpret all the traditions. You have to. You can't take what the Pope says at face value. And I think Catholic apologists are terrified of what Pope Francis will say next because he's an overwhelmingly liberal leftist. He is. He is not at all the same Pope that Pope Benedict XVI was, or Pope St. John Paul II, or the Pope prior to that. Francis is all the way with secularism and leftism and leftist ideology. He's not a conservative. In fact, I don't even consider him a Christian at all. He's not my brother in Christ. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. So, yeah, he's just, he's, he has nothing of value to offer. And um, as long as he, everything has to be interpreted, don't talk to me about papal infallibility. Don't talk to me about unity because people all over the world are having completely different interpretations of what Pope Francis said. If he really was infallible, you wouldn't need to tap dance around everything that he says. Well, now, Drac, he was just speaking as an independent theologian, and he was not speaking infallibly. Oh, yeah? How do you know? How do you know when he's speaking infallibly and when he's not? You don't. <laughs> you really don't. So it seems to me that when he says something right, he's saying it infallibly. But when he says something that's wrong and unbiblical, oh, no, he was just speaking as a private theologian that just then. It's like you'll never know in this life if he was speaking infallibly or not. So the teaching of papal infallibility is utter dog crap. Excuse my language, but it's bull crap. So, yeah, it's just, if he really was infallible and without error, you wouldn't have to interpret his words. So anyways, Catholicism is just a joke, really, when you get down to it, because you can never know when the Pope is speaking infallibly and when he's not. And now you have to interpret all this tradition, because you can't read Francis, and you can't read Benedict XVI and say, oh yeah, there's tremendous continuity. No. And if you say that there is, you are lying. Any Catholics who says that there is no difference at all after Pope Francis said what he said, that it's completely in line with Catholic tradition. Nothing has changed. They're just blessing the individual's who are guilty of sin, and they're asking them to repent. Anyone who says that is simply lying to you. They're just flat out lying to you. 
So if you sell your soul to the Catholic Church, you have to cling to this man's teachings no matter what he says or does. He has the free reign to, says, to say whatever he wants. If Pope Francis lived maybe 400 or 500 years ago, he would have been burned as a heretic, burned at the stake. He would have been killed by fire as a heretic. I think the next pope is probably going to be a homosexual. And I say that not to try and make people laugh, but because that's as liberal as the Catholic Church is, that's just where it's going. And I think that same-sex marriage is going to happen very soon as well. Probably within my lifetime. But anyways, I'm just so fed up with Catholics saying that the Pope is without error, that he's infallible, when they know that he's not. And so, anyways, I have rambled on long enough, but thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you have a happy and safe New Year. God bless you.